So, dear uh, brothers, uh, uh, from the last uh, few weeks, uh, we almost completed all of our uh, basic uh, classes. So, we have come to a level of understanding. <clears throat> so, now is the time that uh, we understand uh, and completely comprehend and understand uh, the divine plan of the ages uh, in a summary way. You must have wondered uh, about the divine plan of the ages. Uh, what is the meaning of these curves, uh, these lines, and these alphabets, uh, and these small, small, uh, you see, uh, symbols uh, which are uh, made uh, plain on the table. So does the Bible speak about uh, any such a uh, chart? If you see, yes. Bible tells about that one in Habakkuk 2.2. Uh, can you read with her? Habakkuk 2.2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain open tables that may that may run that readeth it. You see? So it clearly says, write down the vision and make it plain upon the tables. So, so whatever vision is that if you see, Devadan, it is the vision of the God's plan of the ages. Uh, the plan which God has made for the entire mankind. You see, God told, you see, write down the vision, you see, and make it very clear upon the table. You see, that means it should be something like a chart type of thing. So that everyone may read it, you see, fluently. The table may try to understand it very easily. So, uh, verse three, brother, continue, verse three. Hmm. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. See, it is for an appointed time. This divine plan, you see the things mentioned in the divine plan, everything doesn't uh, happen or get fulfilled at the same time. It gets fulfilled at its own time. But what did God say? He tells to wait. Wait, it will happen at a due time, dear brethren. Therefore, you see, so today we're going to see about the divine plan, you see, and what uh, does uh, the symbols uh, and what does these numbers uh, represent actually. So, if you see here in this uh, divine plan, there are uh, capital alphabetic uh, letters and there are small alphabetic letters also. So, we will study first uh, capital alphabetic letters. Uh, capital A here represents, uh, you see, the first world. We know about the first world. You see, uh, when was the first world? It began from uh, when and when did it end with that? From creation of Adam to uh, flood. Very good. That is the part A. That is the first section, the period of the first world. And the second, uh, you see, the world is uh, actually represented by B, capital B. Now, what is uh, the capital B? It says it is the second world. From when to when, if you see, it uh, marks from the beginning at the, you see, at the end of the flood till the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. That is called as the second world. So this uh, arch uh, uh, under the uh, portion B is actually the second world. Okay. And after that, uh, you can see in the divine plan, this is capital C. So what does capital C represents? If you see, capital C represents the third world. Uh, that uh, begins with the second coming of our Lord Jesus Christ till, uh, you see, the thousand-year reign of Christ. Uh, that is called as a thousand-year or the third world. So we have studied about uh, detail about uh, this, uh, you see, three worlds in the basic classes. Uh, now, we will see the internal bifurcation inside the second world. So if you see, inside the second world, there is capital D. Now what is capital D? If you see, that represents, uh, you see, the patriarchal period. Patriarchal period means uh, the period when God used to deal with the individuals. He used to never deal with a nation, but he used to deal and have, uh, you see, fellowship with the individuals. Uh, like who? If you see, like Abraham, you see, Isaac and Jacob, the ancient worthies, who had faith on God, even before Christ came and died on the cross, these had faith. God had, 
a particular type of relationship uh, with uh, them. This uh, period in the chart or in the Bible is called as the patriarchal age where God is to do, deal only with the forefathers, some individual persons who exercise their faith in the evil world. And uh, once, uh, you see, this uh, patriarchal age ended, automatically what happened? The next age called as the Jewish age began. That is represented by capital E. Okay. Now, what is the meaning of the Jewish age? From when did it begin? If you see, the Jewish age began with the death of Jacob. We just now saw patriarchal means Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So at the death of Jacob, the 12 tribes of Israel came into existence and immediately the nation of Israel was formed. So therefore, if you see, the Jewish age began with the death of Jacob and it went to continue till the beginning of the gospel age. So, as soon as the Jewish age was uh, ending, so what happened if you see, the gospel age, uh, you see, began. Uh, uh, so, we all know how the gospel age began. It began with our ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ who came to this earth to sacrifice his life for uh, Adam. So, since then, the gospel age began. The gospel began to be preached to everybody. And Jesus also told, go preach the gospel to the ends of the world and make them disciples of Christ. So, since that we had till the completion of the church is the gospel age. That is represented by capital F, the gospel age. So, uh, we all know that uh, Jesus uh, preached the gospel uh, you see, from uh, his baptism till the completion of the church. So next, if you see, after that one comes, uh, you see, the capital G. Here, the capital G represents the millennial kingdom. You see, the millennial kingdom is the portion of, uh, you see, uh, in the third world, where Christ and, G and Jesus Christ and the church are going to rule on this earth for a period of, you see, a thousand years. That is the period called as the millennial age. So, so this is represented by capital G. Okay? Now, after this uh, thousand years, we all know that uh, the Bible speaks about, uh, you see, ages to come. In Revelation uh, 21 and 22nd chapter, it says, uh, they shall reign forever and ever. And ever. So, what is the meaning? That means there is going to be a time after the thousand years that the mankind will reign on this earth forever and ever. That is called as the ages to come and that is represented by capital H in the charter. Okay? So, capital H represents the ages to come. Now, uh, after, you see, this uh, capital letters, uh, we can also see that there are some uh, numericals, uh, you see, that are uh, uh, that means numbers that are mentioned in the chart. You see, like for example, the number one. What does number one represent? You see here, number one. You see, number one signifies, uh, you see, the portion uh, of uh, uh, the flood. Uh, you see, the period, uh, the day when the flood uh, began. We all know that during the days of Noah, there was a, you see, very terrible flood that came upon this earth. You see, the flood of the waters was covering the entire earth and rain was so much that, uh, you see, it rained for 40 days and there was a huge flood on the earth and all the people, you see, uh, who were uh, uh, born uh, by the blood of the Jains, they all perished uh, in that uh, flood. So, this represents, uh, you see, the flood, the period of the flood. So, as you come further in the chart, we can see, you see, point number two. So, what is this point number two? You see, that again represents the beginning of the Jewish age. So, when did uh, the Jewish age begin? If you see, it was at the death of Jacob when he blessed his 12 sons, when the nation of Israel came into existence. So, this... Uh, period, we have got a study also, we'll, God willing, we'll see in the future, 
it is a period of 1845 years where jewish people especially favored in the sight of god you remember the story of rich man lazarus you see the rich man you see fed sumptuously he ate very well very good nice robes and clothes and all so that represents the jewish nation who were completely blessed only you see only they were blessed therefore bible says no in amos 3:2 read brother amos 3:2 read brother please amos 3:2 Amos 3.2 You only have I known of all the families of, of the earth. Therefore, I will punish you for, your, for all your iniquities. Brothers, 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 two minutes. Can you spare two minutes time? Okay. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you, brothers. So here, if you see, uh, you read just now read in Amos three two that uh, of all the nations of this world, I only choose a new. So God chose particularly the nation of Israel. There was a rich man who was blessed. Uh, wonderfully by god but uh, the jewish uh, people the nation of israel lost all that favor when the jesus died on the cross so that is uh, uh, the what you saw is the, the jewish period and its uh, time length and next uh, number 3 that that represents the timeline you see now we are going through the line which is vertically you see uh, <coughs> aligned there in the chart so that vertical lines signify actually a time period so number 3 represents the year of baptism of jesus christ so when was our jesus baptized if you see him he was baptized as per the bible calculation it was in 29 ad so jesus was 30 years old at 29 ad so jesus took baptism so that is what number 3 represents here and there is also number 4 on the chart so what does that represent if you see that represents a further three and a half years where jesus died on the cross therefore you can see in the chart you see you can see my arrow uh, is moving here see jesus died on the cross here so this uh, line this line represents uh, number 4 the period when jesus died on the cross jesus did his ministry for three and a half years he preached the gospel you see to the a jewish people and he made the jewish people you see uh, over uh, israelites indeed were there they were gathered as wheat and uh, jesus had to lay down his life uh, for everybody so that was the three and a half years after his ministry but uh, after that one there is a uh, you see number 5 so what does number 5 represent you see the brain number 5 represents the end of 70 weeks you see we are read about the prophecy in uh, Daniel line chapter now the Jewish people were specially granted a favor of seventy weeks. So seventy weeks of favor was uh, specially granted for the uh, Jewish people. So this uh, special seventy weeks were fully dedicated for the people of Israel. So the gospel was never allowed to go out from the Jewish nation to the Gentile side, and it is only at the end of seventy weeks. Uh, that the gospel began to be preached to the gentiles that means that is three and a half years further of the death of jesus christ that is 36 ad so jesus died on the cross on 33 ad so 36 ad you see the door was opened to cornelius the first gentile convert and after it one you can see uh, number 6 that is the dotted lines so what does that the dotted lines represents that represents the destruction of Z the jerusalem in 70 ad so don't mistake 70 years of favor to 70 ad so 70 ad was a year that uh, jerusalem was totally destroyed it came under the wrath of god you see huh? i have uh, i am not quoting so many verses because already you are listen to 
this verses in the basic class itself. Uh, let us read only one verse. Uh, <clears throat> Second uh, uh, Thessalonians. Second Thessalonians. Uh, sorry, First Thessalonians, second chapter, sixteenth verse. For that. First Thessalonians two sixteen verse. Forbidding us to speak to the Gentiles that they might be saved to fill up their sins always. For the wrath is come upon them to to the uttermost. You see, to the uttermost. They were forbidding the spread of the gospel. So God gave them special favor. Even after giving favor upon favor, there was no use. So God, you see, uh, destroyed the Jerusalem in 70 AD. So after that one is number seven. So Number seven, you see, the very, very important uh, number on the chart. We all know that the number uh, seven represents the complete and the perfect number. So that's the perfect number where we can see the return of our Lord Jesus Christ. So Jesus Christ returned to this earth atmosphere in 1874. We have studied about that one in the second coming class. So after that one, you can see, you see, the point number eight. You see, that represents the resurrection of the uh, saint. Saints, that means uh, the resurrection of the church, the first resurrection of the church. So when did that happen? You see, it did not happen as soon as the Lord returned, but as soon as the Lord returned, three and a half years, he tried to correct the church system, the Babylon. But as the Babylon was not corrected, even after three and a half years of special favor, he rejected Babylon. So hence what happened? Since that time, the resurrection of the church also began. So this is much parallel to the first advent of Christ, where three and a half years Jesus did the ministry, trying to correct the Jewish system. As the Jewish system did not correct themselves, Jesus rejected the Jewish system and turned to the Gentiles. So similarly, second advent, Jesus is trying to correct the church. This is the false church systems. So as they are rejecting the word of God, you see, Jesus has rejected them. And uh, since then, what has happened? Uh, the reward to the saints is being given. The resurrection of the church is uh, happening. So let us read one verse for this one in Revelation 14 chapter. Mm. Revelation 14 chapter, uh, verse 8. Mm. And there followed another angel saying, Babylon is fallen, is fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. Very good. So you see, uh, you see, uh, the angel uh, cried out saying, Babylon is fallen, fallen. So as soon as Babylon falls, what happens next in the scene? If you see, read verse 13, brother, Revelation 14, 13. Hmm. And I heard a voice from heaven say, die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, said the spirit that they may rest from their labors and their walks do follow them very good so blessed are the dead who die in the lord from henceforth from which time which time if you see from the time that is mentioned in verse 8 from the fall of babylon the resurrection of the church actually takes place uh, you see so we have seen about the resurrection of the church at the first resurrection of the rapture in the second coming class. So now, point number nine. You see, now nine, the line, you see, I mentioned uh, there is uh, actually the signification of the completion of the church. So do we know when the church will complete? You see, God has never mentioned any date or uh, any period when it will happen. But uh, he has given us some signs. You see, based upon those signs, uh, we can come to know that uh, how much we are near to our salvation. You see, Jesus mentions about those signs in Luke 17 chapter, brother. Luke, sorry, Luke 21 chapter. Luke 21, brother. Luke 21. Luke 21, 28. 
verse 27 and 28 with the huh? and then cells they see the son of man coming in a cloud with power and great glory and when these things begin to come to pass then look up and lift up your heads for your redemption draweth not nick uh, nice. see it says when you see all these things fulfilled before your eyes what are the things sir? when you're free kindly read it in your bible it says about the signs of second coming of a lord and especially you see the signs about the 26 you know, men's heart failing them for fear for looking after those things which are coming on the earth for the power of heaven shall be shaken you see the power of heaven shall be shaken dear brethren so if you see all these things if you can identify all these things kindly understand there is not much time period left it is very very near at the completion of the church dear brethren we are almost living at the brink of this period. Yes, Very clearly, the signs are happening in this world where the great turmoil is happening and the closing of the door, we can see, you see, clearly before rise. So this is the significance that we need to make a calling election sure and be serious about our consecration to the Lord. So next uh, point number 10. Again, we can see here the dotted lines. So what are these dotted lines? You see, once the church is complete, you see, in the coming great time of trouble, you see, the church will be completely resurrected and completely over. They will make the calling election sure. As soon as the, the church makes the calling election sure, immediately the visible kingdom shall be established. Now again, the date is given. No, the date is not given. But the event is given. Once the church is complete, so immediately what will happen? You see, God's uh, visible kingdom, you see, we should understand the difference between the visible kingdom and the invisible kingdom. We are already living in the invisible kingdom part, but uh, the visible part of the kingdom shall be only established after the completion of the church. Let us read Matthew 24. Matthew 24, 22, brother. Huh? Twenty-four, brother. Twenty-four, twenty-two, brother. And except those days shall be shortened, there shall there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Ah, but but for the sake of the elect, if those days of great time were not cut short, we should be so bad and so worst that none of the flesh shall be saved. We have seen we have foreseen the taste in the COVID. Pandemic. This is nothing. This is just a sample. Just see the condition of Ukraine. Just see the condition of Turkey. You see, there's nothing in the nation, sir. You see, no. And Pakistan, Sri Lanka. What is happening, God? Huh? The nations are being crushed, crumbled, pounded. Then in second chapter, it says, no, the stone came and began to pound the nations. Sir. Every nation is being pounded. India is also very near. It will definitely be pounded. So what will happen next? Immediately, the visible kingdom shall be established. That is point number 10. Now, serial number 11, we see seen, that is the end of the thousand years, when the thousand year reign of Christ will be ending. So, it will begin at 1874 and at the end at 2874, thousand years. Okay. Next, you see, dear brother, we will go on for the, again the horizontal lines here. You see, in the capital letters, we will miss some of the letters now. So again, if you see, capital R. Now what does capital R represents? You have studied in the class of uh, three ways. You see, capital R represents the plane of death. You see, Adam, when he sinned, what did happen? He was created in the perfect plane, but he fell into the plane of death. You see, the plane of death, uh, the wages of sin is what? Death. Death, uh, not hell, not tormented. You see, today we can see that uh, so many churches are preaching uh, hell, uh, immortal soul. What does the Bible say? Bible doesn't say any of those things. Uh, Bible doesn't support any of these things. Different. So, plain R. And above plain R, if you see, there is plain N, capital N. So, that represents the plane of perfection in the plane which Adam was created. You see, Adam was created in the image of God. God uh, told that uh, 
man is beautiful and uh, you see so man uh, is uh, in his image and he recognized uh, you see uh, man saying that uh, uh, this is good in the sight of god so he was a perfect man he was created but because of sin what happened he lost that perfection now if you come little bit above there is capital m here now what does this capital m represents remember the class of church almost a year back yeah you see what do we see here the church uh, the church has got uh, four portions uh, four parts uh, four parts of the church uh, so four group in the church uh, and there is one that is called as plain m what does the plain m represents that represents the plane of consecration you see dear brethren jesus actually you see uh, was on plain n he was born on plain n but when did he reach plain m if you see it was only at consecration once jesus consecrated his life to god that means what consecration means uh, you see dedicate his life uh, immersing himself uh, into death uh, sacrificial death uh, that a uh, decision Jesus took at uh, Jordan. You see, so this decision we need to take. What decision? Uh? Not just immersing in baptism. That is not a uh, real baptism. What is the actual baptism means? Uh? Baptism means not just dipping inside the water. That's just a symbol. Baptism means immersing in the death of Christ. Jesus said, "No, I have got a baptism yet to be baptized. How am I straightened until I accomplish it?" Jesus was speaking about the baptism into his death. This is the real meaning of baptism. We need to understand it properly and symbolize it properly. That is the meaning of plain M. Okay, so plain M, a plain of consecration. So as uh, 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 this plain of consecration, you see above that one that goes to non Narve. We'll study shortly also. Above that one, there is a plain L. So what is this plain L? You see. This is the angelic level. Yeah, we see now, huh? man is created little lower than the angels. That means angels are much higher than the human uh, mankind. So angels are higher, mankind are lower. So that represents, uh, you see, the angelic uh, plane. But above all, there is a plane K that represents uh, the divine nature, the immortal nature. Uh, initially. Heavenly Father only had this uh, nature, but Jesus, uh, after proving his faithfulness, uh, he is now in that immortal nature. If we are faithful, obedient to God's word, ready to sacrifice anything for the Lord's sake, uh, and stand for the truth, uh, if we are faithful till that, God would give us the same prize and same crown. So, dear brethren, so we see uh, all uh, you see uh, these parallel lines and uh, all these horizontal lines. Uh, but again, you see, if you come down a little bit uh, in the Jewish age, there is plain P, uh, very much lower than plain N. We read now, plain N represents the perfection plane. But plain P, what does it mean? It means the condition of the Jewish people that they were typically justified in God's sight. How? By offering the sacrifice of bulls and goats. They were typically, in, in a sort, in a way, they were justified, but not uh, completely justified, but they were much better than the world. They had relationship with God. So that represents, uh, we see, the nation of Israel in a much lifted condition compared to the world. And uh, here, if you see, we can see the cross. You see, what does that cross represents? That represents Jesus died in the Jewish nation as a typical sacrifice. You see, all the Old Testament sacrifices signified the death of Christ uh, on the cross. Uh, you see, huh? the Old Testament sacrifices now, all the bullock, uh, goat, various types of sacrifices, morning, evening, all these things, uh, the significance uh, of the sacrifice of Jesus. So Jesus was the original of the shadow of the sacrifices in the Old Testament. Now, we can see small pyramids here, A pyramid. Huh? Now, can you tell me, brother, Gopal, brother, what is this uh, pyramid A? What does it represent? Who do, who does it signify? Adam. <clears throat> Very good, brother. Perfect man, Adam. So, so it represents perfect pyramid, proper, perfect structure. The first man, Adam. Now, B, portion B, that represents 
the fallen condition of the children of Adam. Adam was perfect, but his children's conditions are imperfect. Therefore, if you see, there is no head at all. Right? In the first world, the man can fell into sin. You see, there were only few, but yet uh, they were uh, imperfect before God. Then, in the patriarchal age, we can see pyramid C. Now, what does that represent? See, Adam was perfect, but what is this pyramid C? What does it mean? Any idea, Kapoor brother? Uh, there is written Abraham. Very good. That represents the, you see, Abraham. Why? Because God said he was justified by faith. Okay? So he was the father of faith. So that signifies in all the world. You see, Abraham was justified in God's sight because of his faith. Compared to the fallen condition, he was typically what? You see, somewhat justified. So that represents a great father, Abraham. Now again, if you see, in the Jewish age, we can see the fallen condition of mankind in D, the death condition. You see, the second world, mankind, the still under imperfect death condition, but uh, in a, you see, greater population. And uh, uh, next is E. What is this E represents? This represents Israel. You see, the nation of Israel, above the typically justified condition. Now, you see, again, Pyramid G. Can you guess, brother, who is this Pyramid G? Gopal, brother. Who was the perfect man after Adam? Jesus Christ. Very good. So, Jesus came as the second Adam. So, that represents Jesus and his baptism. See, this represents his uh, uh, baptism as a new creature. Jesus was lifted from the earthly condition to the spiritual condition where he was begotten with the Holy Spirit. Correct, now? So, when, when are we begotten with the Holy Spirit? If you see, at our consecration. That is the time that God gives us the Holy Spirit where our eyes are uh, eyes of understanding are open wide and wide so that we can understand the scriptures very clearly. And uh, uh, <clears throat> above that one, you see, we can see plain I. This represents uh, the Jesus was in spiritual condition. We remember the class of second coming? Jesus was resurrected but he stayed on the heavenly nature for a period of 40 days. He appeared 11 times to disciples. He was not in a divine nature. He was in an angelic nature, but he appeared 11 times in different, different ways. That is what that eye condition signifies. Jesus being on the heavenly, you see, angelic plane, the spirit plane, where his presence was known to the apostles 11 times after his resurrection. Plain K, easily we can identify that represents the divine nature, Jesus in glory. Now, we can see here, uh, F. What is this F? Uh, you see, that represents, uh, uh, I'll show you it again. Okay, brother, go on, brother, Ashkar, you can see. Yes, brother. Okay, listen, listen. The dark ash portion. That represents the harvest of the Jewish age and the burning of the tares. See, so now burning of the chaff, not the tears, sorry. We see the harvest of the Jewish age where wheat and chaff were separated. The chaff was burnt. So that represents the chaff. Uh, eh? And uh, here if we come to the gospel age, we see Q. Q we know very well. That represents the uh, hypocrite uh, Christians who are not uh, real Christians at all, who believe in other gods and as well as Jesus Christ. These are fake Christians. But above that one, we can see plain P. Huh? These are believers. They are justified by believing in Jesus. They are good believers, but they don't follow Jesus Christ. You see? Huh? These are good believers. They are called people, but uh, they don't go on to become the M class, the chosen people. You see? Now, Jesus is seeking believers or followers, brother? Faithfulness. Correct. But before faithfulness, there is a step now. Read Revelation 17, 14. Yes. First uh, called, ah. chosen, then ah. faithfulness. Ah, correct. No. So there is a step now, brother. Yes, called, sir. chosen, 
That's very nice. Very good. Uh, read those. You can read those if you want. Revelations uh, 17. 14. Those shall make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb shall overcome them, for he is Lord of Lords, and King, King of Kings, and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Ah, called, chosen, and faithful. See, called, chosen, faithful. So there's a step. You can't go from the called uh, position directly to the faithful position. Is it? Uh, can we go it? No. That means there is a chosen place. We need to be of the chosen part. Then only we can prove our faithfulness. Like for example, you see, Gideon. Huh? When Gideon called for war, 32,000 people came, brother. Correct, no? Then yes, he made an announcement. Those who all fear can go away. So who all went away? 22,000 people went away. Only 10,000 were left over. Now what did God tell? Huh? This is also much. Now bring him to the water. Let me see how they drink the water. How did the people drink? How many people were selected? Uh, 300. Very good. How did they drink? Uh, they drank through their uh, tongue. Uh, they lifted the water in their hand and drank it. Uh, you see? That means it is very important how we receive the truth. What type of doctrines we are listening? You see, if we listen false doctrines, we will be faithfulness to only those false doctrines. But if we are listening to the true and the real, the truth, we will be faithful to the truth. And what is God seeking? Is God seeking anybody who is faithful to anything? Or is God seeking anybody who is faithful to his words? Faithful towards his words. His uh, words. The truth. Uh, see, you heard so much of subjects. Correct of that? Hell. Soul. Three world. Three ways. Trinity. Lord's Supper. Baptism. Antichrist. Second coming. Where are these subjects? Sir? Why it is not being preached in all the churches? Because is there a truth there? Are they of the chosen people? We need to put a question, brother. Correct, no, brother? We need to think, no? Mm, yes, brother. We need to think. Therefore, being of the chosen class is very important. Just being believer, you see, doesn't matter anything to God. We may believe in Jesus, but Jesus won't consider us as his body. You see, among the virgins, they are foolish, they are wise. So whom do we want to be? Foolish or wise virgins? The decision is up to us. This represents the people of followers. But again, you see, there is small huh? N. You see, we need to be of that class. Who is this one? The little flock. The faithful people. Now what is the number of that? What is oh, the like number 44, of 44,000. Correct. Why is still not completed? Um... Why it's not completed yet? Correct. Uh, uh, because uh, <laughs> he's, he's selecting one well, like uh, 44,000. Correct. Why, why, uh, it is very easy for God to do the selection. No? Why is not selected? Why is not completed? Because uh, he's giving time. Okay. So, it, uh, so he wants to give more time. So there are more people. <laughs> no. You're very near. You're very correct. You know? Like, uh, for, for, because hmm. one like 44,000 are not completed yet. Uh, because such type of people are not had been found. The vacancy is oh. there. Such type of people, God is really searching. He is yet in the search. That means, still. Uh, a faithful class of people are not at come. Still the vacancy is there, brother. Just think, period of 2,000 years, not even 1,44,000 people 
O faithful to Christ, we may be faithful as per our wish. We have to be faithful to God as He wishes. That is the main thing. You see? And if we are faithful, then only what will God do? He will give us the immortal nature. You see, as Jesus was given, that is represented by Pyramid L. Then, what is Pyramid R? If you see, that represents the Jesus' second presence into this earth atmosphere. Huh? Jesus came back now. Now, where is Jesus? If you see, he is not visible. Why? Because he is in the earth atmosphere, invisibly ruling on this earth. And uh, what is this? Yes, uh, small yes, if you see, that uh, yes represents the resurrection of the church. That means the final resurrection, I'm saying. Okay. The church is already resurrected. But the final, the final set of the people will be resurrected in a great time of trouble. Now you can see yes here. See, this yes sir, and this F are much similar. It's in the dark portion. So what does it represent? This represents the great time of trouble. A period of the harvest where the wheat and the tares are separated. Therefore, you can see the three, three pyramid is becoming into three parts. See, huh? the three parts are being separated. Huh? The great multitude. Huh? Then, you see, the Babylon, the nominal church system, you see, the Protestants and the Roman Catholic will all be what? Separated. But they will all be left down here on this earth. They will never be glorified. So, if you see there, W, that represents the entire church glorified. That means, at Jesus' coming, second coming, few people will be with our Lord, the apostles and all were resurrected. But uh, once the lack and party of the complete set of uh, church is completed, then the visible rule will happen on this earth. You see, so here the hex represents the church. Again, the four salvations. You remember now, last time we read about that. Jesus and the church in his glory. Then Y represents, uh, you see, the great multitude in the angelic form. And uh, Z uh, represents, uh, you see, the ancient worthies uh, in uh, Israel. And uh, W represents, uh, you see, the visible part of the kingdom, the world of uh, mankind. So this is what uh, the summary of uh, we said the divine plan of uh, ages. Okay, brother? Copper brother? I hope uh, uh, you might have understood a little bit of the portion of it. Uh,